So, yeah. first of all, um, thank you for accepting the invitation. It's a pleasure for me to have this conversation with you and share all the content. And share with us, Paul, your present works in the psychic entertainment spirit work. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, I sort of, I, I got into mentalism really by mistake. Um, I was, I didn't take the, I didn't take the usual route, um, into mentalism at all. I came from a background, um, as you may be aware, a background of, of believing a hundred percent in, in the supernatural and the paranormal. Um, and really found my way into magic very late in life. I wasn't, um, the kind of guy who used to go to the magic club as a kid and then sort of was tutored by the older magicians at all. I had no idea how magic worked. I used to see the magicians on TV and always assumed that there was something paranormal going on somewhere, that they must have some weird, strange gift to be able to do what they do. I, ne I, never, I never figured out that it was something technical, that it was, it was more to do with engineering than, than magic. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, so I spent a lot of time um, teaching myself how to read tarot cards, how to read palms, um, investigating haunted locations, etc. as a complete believer. And so when I sort of stumbled across magic and, um, I, and, I, and I sort of enjoyed what I found out, I, you know, I, I discovered mentalism uh, via Darren Brown, as probably so many people uh, did. And, uh, but I was never very good at tricks. I've never been very good at the sleight of hand. I'm a terrible, terrible magician. Uh, but what I think I've managed to bring to the table in the, in the world of mentalism is that years of experience of doing it for real, as it were, yeah. um, of, of being a tarot card reader, of being a palm reader, of running seances, um, and combining that with a mentalist's approach to to show business to be able to take those ideas and make them into a show um, where it is sort of what I think I've managed to do is meld the two worlds together bring the world of the paranormal and the esoteric and yeah. merge it with the more performance based uh, men mentalism which yeah. I've managed to sort of create a little bit of a niche for myself I think yeah 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 I I feel that you are one of the most influence people and, and authors in the understanding that mentalism and psychic entertainment and readings and normal magic have this realism inside that you can really take just a simple technique from our craft and apply yeah. all the theatrics all the understanding that you have about the paranormal about how this reality is constructed and, and really understanding that the outer reality that we offer to your audiences is the primer experience. We can use just a basic marking, whatever, or any type of very basic technique, but applying all this whole world, I think that really creates a powerful experience for our audience. So you said yeah. that you, you believe in the time, right? When you start in your development oh yeah absolutely yeah i I, I, will, I, yeah. I will not ask you if you believe now but <laughs> what is what is your understanding of those paranormal or spiritual realities yeah i um yes so for a long time i absolutely believed i believed that the tarot cards had some mystical uh, attributes um attached to them and that they sort of unlocked the psychic ability within you um then when I, uh, and I, and I believed in ghosts, I believed in the supernatural, I believed in UFOs, I believed in Bigfoot, you know, I believed in everything. And um, when I discovered mentalism and started, you know, reading 13 Steps to Mentalism and watching Darren Brown and, uh, and sort of looking into the history of it, uh, I sort of, as I think many people do, and as a particularly sort of, um, it's not so bad now, but about 10 years ago, everybody in the mentalism world was a skeptic and everybody was uh, an NLP expert and a body language expert and they were all very skeptical of anything remotely esoteric and so for a short while I thought ah well if I'm going to be a mentalist I have to be like that as well yeah. so, I, so I, I almost overnight became became a skeptic and decided yes this is it I don't, I don't believe in anything anymore and then I 
after about after about I don't know six months a year of that, I decided that being this skeptic wasn't making me happy as an individual and what I missed was the mystery in the world I liked yeah. the idea that there was something else yeah. out there yeah. that is slightly beyond our comprehension something slightly mystical uh, and that it was possible for miracles to happen it was possible to communicate with the dead and so now I see myself very much as someone who I, I, I choose to have a level of belief I'm not stupid I'm not I'm not an idiot I know that you know a lot of the esoteric world is is not true you know uh, but I choose to have a level of belief mm. uh, for no other reason than I enjoy having that level of belief I enjoy yeah, yeah. believing that maybe there are fairies at the end of the garden and and um, and if there aren't I don't care I you know I, I like to leave the door open to the possibility yeah. That, yeah. That, that 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 world exists beautiful so in a way, what are you saying impacts me in the way that in our natural reality, there are some quote-unquote supernatural events. But mm. they are supernatural because we don't understand them now with our materialistic and scientific views, right? Because some authors talk about the scientific reality or the material reality and also the metaphoric reality or the symbolic one, right? So yeah. we, we can say that, for example, I use as fairies. Fairies are not real in this material scientific understanding, but in the other aspect, they, there is, right? And we mm. can't mix both together because if I try to understand fairies, for example, in a scientific way, I say, no, they don't exist, right? But we need to appreciate both observations and yeah. i think that with our performances we allow people to also understand that this reality is also real yeah 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 absolutely and i think um i mean this is just my sort of personal viewpoint is that things like fairies or elementals or perhaps even ghosts spirits perhaps they can only exist if you believe they yeah. exist yeah. and if you don't if you don't believe they exist then you take away all of their power and they and they cannot exist yeah. uh, whether that whether that means i'm just making them up or or not is a different conversation and even even if we're talking about we're just making these stories up yeah on a metaphorical level what what does that mean that you know are, are we able to create these entities by our own imagination and by our own belief and by our own intention yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's 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 a fascinating uh, subject, you know, yeah. fascinating and one Beautiful. that you know talk about forever. But uh, yeah. yeah, you know, and 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 that's before we even start talking about the multiverse theories and uh, <laughs> universes laid upon universes and realities laid upon realities. Yeah, yeah. Or, and, and, or the the non-existence of time and that everything is happening at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And of course, you know, what is reality? You know, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I come from a constructivist point of view in a way that I understand reality as everything that is perceived as real, right? Mm. So as you said, we need to open the belief of people in another way on understanding in the language can be, we allow people to focus on that because that mm. phenomenon is already happened. But yeah. we say, look that. And just with that archetypical image of the magician, right? That look there, we are basically yeah. saying to people, watch. As David Ben said, right? David Ben said, yeah. watch, look. And yeah. that, uh, that for me is the real value of what we do is that we focus to the phenomena. And because we create reality with our consciousness and our perception, that phenomena becomes real because now it's part of my mind. Hmm. Yeah. And of course, what um, I, um, I often say to people when I'm doing workshops is that as, 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 as mentalists, for want of a better phrase, as, as performers, um, what we're doing is bringing wonder into people's lives uh, and bringing mystery into people's lives. And although magicians, you know, in general tend to be seen as quite, you know, it, it's, uh, it's quite a, almost like a throwaway art. It's sort of like, a, it's, it's not, it's not a high art. Um, um, but what you're doing is bringing mystery and enchantment into people's lives. And that 
to me is one of the greatest gifts in the world if, yeah. you know even if even if you bring that mystery and that wonder into one person's life then you've achieved something remarkable yeah. really i i think and to be able to do that in front of an audience as you know time after time apart from when there's not coronavirus of course shutting all the theaters but to be able to do that on a persistent level and to, to yeah. be able to bring wonder into people's lives is not something that we should underestimate yeah. or devalue you know yeah. um because it's um you know you are right up there with authors with filmmakers with people who can just suspend that mundane reality that sort of day-to-day -day reality yeah. um and give people a glimpse into an alternative reality uh, where wonder and, and magic really happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a beautiful duty to have, right? To, to mm. re remind people how mysterious everything is, right? Life, mm. your own life, our collaborative experience of reality, how mysterious is the universe, is the creation of everything, the normal daily situation, right? The, the telepathic communication that we can metaphorically create. So I think that, as you said, we have a beautiful task. And, and sometimes we forget that with all the mainstream of tricks and by the latest and greatest, you know, the, the yeah. coronavirus, as they said. And how is the coronavirus affecting you in a professional way? Um, well, luckily, uh, well, in a couple of ways. I mean, I, I haven't been for a while focusing on, on live performances. For a while, I've been more uh, doing you know, writing, doing workshops, lectures, etc. Um, but just recently, I've started doing a new show, uh, a two person act nice. that was, it, it was originally going to be a two person telepathy act, uh, like the Eversons or the Clairvoyants, very much based on a code. Um, but me being me, it was a Victorian, it was based in, the, in Victorian spiritualism. Uh, but the, the, the lady that I'm doing the show with, she's a professional actress. And so what we decided was that rather than just do a, a straight two person code act, we would create a piece of theater where there's a story to it. You know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, not, it's not just tricks, you know, not, not to belittle people, you know, it, it, uh, it, what anybody else does. But what we wanted was to have a story there as well. Yeah. So we, for the past year, we've been working on it. And as we worked on it, the code was meant to be the main thing. The code was meant to be you know, the thing. But I thought, well, we'll put a few of the little bits and bobs in there, you know, a few of the bits of business in there. Yeah. And one thing that we, I introduced was a QA and a uh, part of the show with yeah. uh, uh, messages from the audience in sealed envelopes and um, the, the lady, um, her character's name is Madame Celeste, she's the medium, uh, divines the answers from the envelopes and as soon as we started doing that we suddenly realized that's the main part of the show. Beautiful. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was just so much fun to do yeah. uh, and as well I'm talking about bringing wonder and magic into people's lives the lady, she's a professional actress, and explaining to her how the one ahead system works for the Q and A, it was just like amazing to see her, you know, her, the twinkle in her eyes, and to yeah. think, oh my god, because I, you know, I demonstrated it for her in front of her, and she couldn't figure out how I knew what her questions were that she'd written, and when I explained to her, she was just like, wow, this is yeah. just unbelievable, you know, just yeah. opened up all new doorways for her. So we we performed the show twice in the United States in Baltimore. Um, and we were planning on sort of rolling out the shows over here during the, the coming summer. But of course, coronavirus arrived and uh, she's in London. I'm in the north of England. And um, so it's been it, it's been difficult enough anyway to meet, to rehearse. But now with coronavirus and the UK has just been put on lockdown, you're not allowed to travel, you know, where, where you don't need to. You're yeah. supposed to stay indoors. So really now we're, we're realistically looking at um, launching the show uh, properly in 2021. So uh, we, we're hoping we might be able to get a show around Halloween uh, yeah. in October and maybe again do another show around Christmas. But uh, but really everything has been you know everything has stopped everything yeah. has been pushed back. Uh, we just have to wait this period out. So yeah. Yeah. although it hasn't yeah. affected me so much monetarily, uh, artistically it's slowed that show right yeah. down unfortunately. But yeah. 
what what can you do you know it's uh, an yeah. unprecedented you know yeah. event nothing we can do about it nobody could have seen this coming <laughs> who knew <laughs> you know just yeah. just you know just a month ago you yeah know, Ma were, mother nature is powerful right and absolutely i, I, I wrote yeah. on facebook today that this is a reminder for for the world to say stop it this is not your place right you, yeah. you, you, you don't own the earth and uh, and it's funny to think in that manner because we f we think that human beings are so powerful and mm. the center of science and the mm. most advanced right bollocks right so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we need to be to to remind ourselves as uh, creators and, and performers and professionals out there that this is a time to cultivate ourselves to mm. think new ideas to go yeah. to the cave, right? When the old shamans and artists, real, the, the original artists, <laughs> went to the caves where to receive the yeah. inspiration, the word from the, the diamond, right? How yeah. you yeah. want to understand it. Yeah. We need to go to our offices, to our creative space, and take the time that we have to create new powerful art for the 2021, because people yeah. will need that, right? Yes, right, absolutely. Right, right now we have a health problem. Then we will go to the big economic problem, and mm. also the emotional the state mm. of the of the whole society will be very low. Right? Yeah. We are sick. Yeah. I lost my mother. I lost my grandmother. Whatever. So yeah. we need to go with powerful art, with powerful healing for people, so mm. they can receive what they need. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the role of artists will be uh, very important yeah. in in the coming years. And I think uh, the, the the role of artists and art in society is often undervalued. Yeah. You know, anyway, by by mainstream society. Yeah. Uh, and in the UK, drama classes are being cut in schools. There's uh, the funding for the arts has been slashed. Yeah. Um, and yet, during this time, when people are having to stay at home, who do they turn to for their entertainment? Yeah. To artists, you know, to filmmakers, to novelists, to TV makers, you know, to, uh, to, to video game makers, you know, all these artists yeah. uh, in times of trouble, who you turn to without even realizing that this, that this is art. And if you're yeah. slashing the funding for art and you're undervaluing art, yeah. then what, what, what would life be without it? I think... Uh, it was um, during World War Two, and I don't know if this story is is, is true or whether it's apocryphal. apocryphal uh, uh, it's easy for you to say. Um, uh, um, but during World War Two, Winston Churchill uh, was, I think, one of one of the members of the government wanted to cut funding for the arts in order to you know direct that money elsewhere. And Winston Churchill said, "But if we cut the arts, what are we fighting for?" Yeah. Uh, and I think that's the uh, that that should be the 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 mindset of society is yeah. that art is what gives society its soul yeah, exactly. uh, and, it's, and it's and it's so often undervalued and seen as frivolous and um you know everybody who works as a performer or a writer will have been told at one time in their life when you're going to get a proper job you know yeah. and yeah. It, it, and if all, if all the artists went off and got proper jobs in factories and offices then you know the whole the soul of the society would be gone yeah. you know the reason the sort of the reason that makes living um enjoyable <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, the dead, uh, dead poet society right that yes scene, absolutely yeah that beautiful thing that when they say the scientist allows us to to live right no to, to to just survive but the poetry the arts the beauty allows us to really enjoy life and i think that the first responsibility for us is us the, mm -hmm. the ones that do are doing performances right because if if the audience and society sees magic or mentalism or any type of variant as trivial it's because of us because mm -hmm. we think that the only way to do things and the real value of what we do is in the commercial aspect, right? Mm. And I, I understand that th there will be performers that do trick after trick, or they are performers that are doing for the money. I, I'm not, nobody to judge, right? But I, I think that as we speak before, one of the lessons that you gave to the community of mentalism and magicians is that there's no a way to do it. Mm. There are many ways to achieve what we want because not everyone have the same desire in performance mm. and and w when you wrote for example your the keys of clairvoyant right yes yeah it, it's beautiful because you show another way in order to create 
the mm. mysterious experience. And and yeah. there's a lot of other examples in your work, but I, I think that that's a real value from your work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And I, I mean, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest. The, the the reason I do things my way is because I can't do them any other way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't I don't have the skills. You know, I I watch I, I watch the magicians. You know, the, the 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 card artists do the stuff with cards, and I'm in awe. And I'm like, yeah. you know, wow, that's just amazing. But I I don't have those skills. You know, exactly. I don't have those skills. So I had to find my own way. Yeah. To 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 create magic. Yeah. Uh, in in a way that I could. Yeah. Uh, and you know so 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 yeah that that although it, it's it's nice that people see it as you know um opening up new avenues new new ways of doing things for me it was a purely practical uh dilemma that yeah. i didn't know any other way of doing it <laughs> yeah 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 and that's a beautiful limitation to have because in a way you were connected with your potential which mm. is at the same your weakness so mm. oh, okay I, I can't pull my card i can't do any whatever so how can I do it? I can do other things in order, as you said, to reach the magic, the mystery, yeah. that experience yeah. in which mm -hmm. we are inviting our participants. So I think that for anyone who is watching this conversation, for me, that's a real piece of gold. There's no a way to do it. Find your way, observe mm -hmm. yourself, and, and don't be limited by your limitations, but use them as the potential yes. of your oh, yeah, Absolutely. Right? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's it, 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 it's, uh, it's sort of reframing. It's it's a technique I used a lot. I use a lot in readings, which is uh, when, when people come to start doing, say, tarot readings or palm readings, they say, "What happens if I if I get it wrong? You know, yeah. what happens if it, if it goes wrong? What what if I say something and the person I'm doing the reading for says, no, that's that, that's not true,' and they're very worried that you know about about that. And I always say to them that it, what take what you think is a, a bad thing and make it a good thing. Yeah. For example, if somebody says that, you know, doing a tarot card reading and you say, oh, this card here says that, you know, the past 12 months haven't been so good. You've had some worries to get over. And the person goes, oh no, it's been, no, the past 12 months have been all right, actually. It's been quite a good year. No, that doesn't make any sense at all. Rather than going, oh my God, I got it wrong. You can go, well, isn't that interesting? Because you're saying the past 12 months was good, but the cards are saying that the past 12 months was a bit, you know, not so good. Why would that be? And you, you can just use that as a, a way of opening up the conversation. Yeah. Um, and, you know, by, by doing that, um, it, it, you can continue the conversation and, it, and the person that you're reading for will say, well, maybe what the cards are talking about is this incident that perhaps wasn't so good. And yeah, so rather than, being worried of being of, of um saying anything wrong a really powerful phrase is isn't that interesting yeah. you say that and the cards or what i'm seeing in your palm yeah. or what i'm sensing is, is different that's an interesting you know why why yeah. have we got that difference of opinion isn't it strange and yeah. you can continue the conversation and it becomes more powerful because of that yeah and uh, I, I should also say as well that the uh for a, uh, for for about two years, I used to work a lot at wedding receptions, doing doing uh, as as a, as a strolling magician, a close-up magician, uh, which is laughable because I have none of the skills of, of a close-up magician. But I used to sell myself as a as a magician, but I I couldn't do any of the things that the other guys could do. Um, and I remember I took my first booking for a wedding reception, and it was about six months ahead. You know, the booking was about six months ahead. Uh, and I thought, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do at the wedding reception, but I'll figure it out nearer the time. And about two weeks before the booking, I thought, I'm really going to have to figure out what I'm actually going to do at this wedding. And I tried to learn some card tricks, couldn't. I tried to learn some slides, couldn't. And, and the days were ticking down. So I thought, what, what can I do that I already know how to do that I could transfer into, that, into the wedding reception market and of course I could read tarot cards I could read palms so I went along to the wedding and I did a few self-working card tricks and then I started reading people's palms and everybody loved it and I carried on getting more and more bookings for weddings and I would turn up and I would essentially read palms and I would say I've also got my tarot cards if anybody's feeling brave and would like a tarot card <laughs> reading uh, and and for you know for about uh, 18 months, two years, I made my living essentially from working at wedding receptions and doing palm readings and tarot card readings and a few self-working card tricks. And, uh, but I was selling myself as a magician yeah. and, and not once during that time did anybody ever say to me, 
we've we booked you as a close-up magician and you're doing palm readings you know what's the deal everybody you know enjoyed it everybody liked it sometimes they would say oh you're not you're not what we were expecting but nobody complained and i think the reason for that is that uh, we often in this world get too caught up in 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 labels and names yeah, for yeah. things and boxes and is this magic is it mind magic is it mentalism is it bizarre magic is it storytelling yeah you know, uh whereas in the real world you know with the uh with with everyday people normal people people who aren't us magic is this big sort of banner under which anything that's weird and wonderful lives from harry potter to yuri geller yeah. to stage mediums to darren brown to dynamo you know it all comes under this banner of magic which is a yeah. weird and wonderful thing and so the fact that i was doing palm readings didn't disturb people didn't upset people they just say yeah well a, ma a magician would know how to read palms wouldn't he you know and and they were quite happy with that uh so yes so uh so yes uh, absolutely if, if there's one thing that i can impart to people it's don't be afraid of embracing your weaknesses what you see as a weakness just you just need to flip it and you can turn yeah. it into a into something that's positive yeah, and just exactly. see how you can reframe it yeah exactly so and, um, that's all that's all i've been doing for the past 10 years is to, is, <laughs> just adjusting just adjusting. taking my many many weaknesses <laughs> and making them work for me yeah. yeah of course of course because as you said and and i i feel that it's very very interesting to observe it with equibook right this magician's choice technique it will because that technique is also about that about adjusting because I, when i do my workshop about equivoc some people said but what happens if this what happens mm. is that right and i ask them back why do you think that this is wrong or this is right mm. right because yeah. it's our first understanding of that event as bad or good or uh, what happens if the reading doesn't go correct goes mm. wrong is because you think about that as a wrong but yeah. If you said, oh, that's interesting, and yeah. you really felt that that was the path, hmm. people will say, oh, that, what happens? Because we are the creators of that reality. Hmm. We are creating yeah. that reality for the participants. So if we yeah. think that this happens, is grown, will be grown. Hmm. If we think that we can adjust that towards the goal, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Because people don't know what's supposed to happen. They don't yeah. know what, what you're hoping to happen. Yeah. And yeah. I think yeah. what, what you have to be is, is very flexible. That's why sometimes I think magicians and mentalists, although we often come from the same place, really they're very different skill sets. Yeah. Magicians yeah. are used to um, something happens, A happens, which leads to B, which yeah. leads to C. And yeah. if you do the slight in the correct way, if you do the mechanics correctly, you will all, this will always work and you will yeah. always get the same response. Yeah. Whereas yeah. In, in mentalism, I think you have to be a bit more fluid. Yeah. You have yeah. to just embrace the moment. And if things don't go the way that you think that had planned them to go, yeah. then don't let that freak you out. Don't let that, you know, think, oh my God, the trick's gone wrong. Because exactly. uh, there, there is nothing worse than a performer standing on stage and going, oh, well, that didn't work, did it? Let's try <laughs> something else. That yeah. is, that is what, that, you know, that's embarrassing for, yeah. for the audience. It's embarrassing for the performer. It's, you know, nobody comes out of that situation uh, looking good. So, uh, so yeah, it's to be fluid. It's to be able to embrace what happens. And if you're halfway through a routine and it suddenly takes a, a sharp turn in another direction don't get freaked out by it just think to yourself oh that's what's happening tonight that's yeah. what that's what that, that's what tonight's show is about yeah. and embrace that and just uh, have confidence in yourself as a performer that you you can just go with whatever direction the you know the performance or the volunteer or whatever happen, you know what wants to go yeah. and not be stuck on a rigid script you yeah. know obviously how you, obviously you you have signposts that, that say the way you're hoping things will go yeah. but if if things go completely differently embrace it you exactly. know say okay great and that and that as a performer stops you from becoming jaded and bored with with your performance because you never know from one performance to the other yeah. what exactly is going to happen yeah and just yeah, you know yeah. and just and just embrace that sort of that ad lib you know that yeah. improv element exactly. yeah. yeah you know and, and improvisation is a very interesting concept to observe because real improvisation is not just mediocrity to go to a stage and say okay what can i do uh, let me it's not that improvisation is 
understanding that you have a guideline. You know that you will present the theme of the performance, you will invite your participant, you will create conversation, whatever. But then let air between those <clears throat> bigger steps, right? So if something yeah. happens that you didn't expect, you are prepared yeah. to the unexpected because you are already prepared. And that's, pre yeah. that's true improvisation. The, yeah. For example, in jazz, the, the musicians that play jazz understand that improvisation is not just trying to play anything because we, we yeah. will not sound authentic. Mm -hmm. we, we, we prepare tools, lines melodically, so we are connected to the space and in a spontaneous manner, we bring the tools that we need, right? So yeah. some people are very afraid of this balanced mm -hmm. approach because they, oh, mm -hmm. I, I can't go without a script. I can't, and it's not that. It's allowing a space, allowing air to really be flexible and to embrace both, both skills, to be prepared and plan whatever, but also to let the conversation yeah. going. And as you said yeah. at the beginning, that what we do is not, not a monologue. And sometimes mm -hmm. we, we prepare our performances in that idea that we are just talking and just doing and go, go back, right? It's not that it's a conversation and a conversation is fluid. The conversation change and the conversation yeah. is like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, a lot of mentalism requires the use of volunteers. Yeah. Um, and when, when you get real life people on stage with you, you know, or wherever you're performing, uh, or even if it's close up at a table, you can never be 100% prepared for yeah. how those individuals are going to react because everybody's different. Everybody will react differently. Uh, and so, you know, your performance can take many different, different routes just depending on the, on the personality of the person that you're working with. Yeah. And you just have to be able to, you know, ad lib that, you know, one of the greatest, uh, greatest sort of routines that we're in mentalism is the Q and A act. And anybody who's done a Q and A act knows that really you can be prepared for it. You can have an idea of where you're going, but really, you know, Q and A, who knows what questions you're going to get yeah. asked, you know, and you just have to, your you, your show will be different every time and yeah. if you if you if, if you've got the skills as a performer to do a q a act then i think you can then after that you can deal with anything really you can exactly. deal with <laughs> with any performance style yeah. if you can just go out and do a q a act absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and how how do you see the use of intuition in the q a oh uh, uh, well uh, yes i i've always um, you used intuition. I mean, we could talk for hours about what intuition is, um, uh, but I've always used uh, a degree of intuition. And, you know, if, even after you've revealed the question or answered the question, then allowing your intuition to come into play and take things further is a, is a huge uh, skill, a huge ability to have to, to sort of answer the question, uh, but then take it further and yeah. say, you know, I'm also sent this and that uh, and I'm not being afraid to do that because if you know what the question is you've got the ultimate get out of jail free card so you can allow your intuition to go off on a tangent and to say things and if the person goes no that doesn't make any sense don't be afraid of that because yeah. you've still got you still know what their question is and so you still you can reveal that and get the yeah. sort of the big ta-da moment uh, so yes I've always brought intuition into it and um and, and even in the new show with the ladies i'm working with uh she's a very intuitive individual and she 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 just naturally does that she has she has no background in mentalism or magic at all so to her it's, it's perfectly natural yeah. to use her intuitive gifts yeah. as part yeah, of the and, show and that that's a, as a matter of fact for me from the external world it's a strength that she didn't know about magical mentalism because our mainstream understanding of these practices are very scientific and very linear, right? Mm -hmm. The effect and the method, right? It's mm -hmm. almost like if you do the method, you will create the effect and it doesn't yeah. work like that. And yeah. I think that because she's an actress and also she's a woman, right? Because intuition is more female as, as a archetypical skill. I think that she's very capable and I know a lot of people that just can't see someone and know their star sign. Mm -hmm. or just feel something wrong about someone and they're very intuitive and, and they, mostly women, but also some males, they don't understand how they do it. And I think that that's the nature of intuition, mm -hmm. right? It's not rational. 
Yeah, so, absolutely. So, we are committing um, uh, a mistake in here, but how can you explain in a rational manner your understanding of intuition? Uh, probably I can't, <laughs> is, is a short answer. Right. Uh, but, but, but I have, a, I probably can come up with a longer answer as well, uh, knowing me. Um, I, think, I think intuition is really a heightened sense of self preservation. I mm. think uh, intuition has developed um from historically you know going back eons uh it was what kept us safe from being eaten by saber-toothed tigers yeah. it was and it's, it's experiences it, it's uh subconscious analyzing a situation that we're in right now and constantly in the background sort of working like a computer in the background comparing it to situations that we've been in in the past yeah. and if the situation we've been in the past was say dangerous suddenly it will make us feel uneasy. I mean, we've all had that feeling of walking down the street and suddenly feeling uneasy or seeing somebody and getting a bad vibe about them. I know what I, and again, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a sociologist. Uh, what do I know? Uh, but um, I think what it is, is you're subconsciously constantly making comparisons with previous experiences just to try and give you half a second head up, heads up to yeah. say you know be careful or we don't like that person or we like that person you know when you you look at somebody and you, and you automatically start talking to somebody and you automatically like them you see yeah. you know you gel there's no effort there you your conversation flows and you just connect whereas yeah. some people you meet and you just for whatever reason they've done nothing wrong to you but you just think i just can't get on with them you know i just yeah. i just don't like them and i think that's your intuition um uh which and and often your intuition can be wrong i'm not saying it's, it's not a it's not infallible by a long stretch yeah. Yeah. but i think it's your subconscious's way of just trying to give you a heads up yeah. uh, of, a, of, of, of a situation yeah yeah and yeah. and your, your description sounds to me like one book that i don't remember the author right now he has a big afro <laughs> but <laughs> it, it is called the intuitive intelligence right it's a very psychological right. understanding and our subconscious but if you Take that and apply it in your Q&A when you had an intuitive insight of something that you really don't know. How, how can you explain that phenomena for you? For me, I, 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 I probably, again, I probably can't, apart from uh, the, maybe the, if the person that I'm addressing subconsciously reminds me of somebody that I know or I used to know, and I, and I sort of subconsciously remember what their story is, yeah. And I so I put I'm, and I'm sort of superimposing that story onto them. But of course, the thing is as well is that human beings are more alike than we're not. So whatever is true for me or you or anybody watching this video is true for everybody else as well. We all yeah. go through the same experiences. You know, we've all had our heart broken. We've all broken hearts. We've all had ups and downs. We've all you know we've all had victories and defeats. Yeah. And so if and, and again, it's a big sort of technique in, in doing readings is that it's a realization that people are more alike than they are different. Yeah. And, and people, if you're talking to them about their experiences, about their life, you are likely to be right because we've, we're all alive. We've all experienced the same things. Yeah. You know, you know, their pain, they know your pain, you know, yeah. you know, their joy, they know your joy because we're both human beings. Yeah. You know, we have this huge thing in common. We're the same species. Yeah. And, um, and, and also on top of that, people, as we know, are very good at um, sort of finding patterns and designs in things. So if you're saying something and, and the person that you're, doing the reading essentially for likes you they will work hard to make what you're saying fit to make it to make sense so as long as you're an amiable likable person and they don't think oh i don't like this guy you know then they'll just say no that doesn't make any sense just to spite you but if they like you they will bend over backwards to make it fit and to sort of say yes that makes yeah. sense so so yes uh um just it's uh, the only, the only way to sort of experience it is to do it for yourself as a performer, to do a Q&A show. And, and Q&A shows really is just cold reading on steroids, really. It's, yeah. you know, it's, the, same, it's the same skill. Yeah. Um, and what, and yet, you, what you said sounds interesting in, a, in, in the way that in order to be intuitive on a stage and to allow intuition to happen, we don't, in a way, we don't need to do nothing. Hmm. But 
in order to do nothing, you have to do something. And that something for me is openness. Mm. Because I, I observe myself in performance as a channel, right? It's a more mm. kind of mystic way, if you want, but it's okay. And in a real manner, we are channel mystery. So mm. I am just need to allow that to happen, right? And yeah. obviously, in a psychological manner, we can understand it that we, I am looking the person. Maybe if I saw the question written, I can mm. analyze the, the handwriting, you know, various different psychological ways, and they're correct. But... I also sense that in order to be a better intuitive performer in all kinds of performance, we need to just open and allow that to happen. And that's mm. difficult because yeah. our ego is very attached to ourselves, right? And we attach to our ego. So we think that we know who we are and whatever, but you know, in order to open, we open that uncertainty. And in, when we have those skills of managing their uncertainty, we can create so powerful mysteries for people that I think it's very worth it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, I t totally agree. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, it's just getting over that fear, the fear of being wrong, yeah. you know, and I mean, we all, we all have it. I'm not saying that I don't have that same fear myself yeah. because of course I do and but, stand on stage and think, Oh my God, what am I doing here? You know, <laughs> Oh my God. But you just have to open your mouth and start yeah. talking and just yeah. let the words come out. Yeah. And then, and, and it's very, very addictive once you've done it once and yeah. you get the buzz from yeah. it you'll be like oh my god can't wait to do that again yeah. so yeah and i've had many you know i, I run one-to-one -one workshops with people who want to learn how to do readings you know, want to learn how to use tarot cards or you know read the palm and i've i have genuinely had guys sit in front of me and they said i've been studying cold reading for 10 years i've read every book i can and i still haven't done a reading and and they and say why they said oh well I'm still I need to get over that fear you know yeah. this is ten years later yeah. and the only way to get out of over the fear is to do it yeah. and the only way to to learn really you don't learn how to be a reader from books you yeah. know you can get the ideas you can get pointers but really the the only time you really start learning as a reader is when you start reading for people you know what yeah. using whatever using whatever method you you prefer whether yeah. it's you know wh whether it's something mystical like the tarot or whether it's something like handwriting analysis the only way to do it is to go out and do it and the more yeah. you do it the better you'll get at it and uh, and you'll get more confident with it as well yeah, yeah. and you'll get better you get used to handling people you'll get used to talking to people and and that that's the that, that's you know that's the best way to learn apart from buying my pdfs of course which yeah of is course probably the very best way of learning but apart from that uh, real life experience <laughs> are, are you offering your workshops in an online manner right now not at the moment no well i i have done in the past i've i um uh, I've done Skype um, and sort of Facebook Live sort of uh, things. Um, but I tend, I, I personally prefer, I mean, th these days, of course, we can't with the coronavirus, but uh, I personally prefer to be sat with the person yeah. in, in, you know, in person. Um, I, I don't tend to like that sort of the, the screen between us. I like to be, you know, to be able to sort of sit, sit, sit with the person I'm working with. Um, because I think it, that just works better, but of, yeah. of course, you know, sometimes it's not always possible. Yeah. yeah, and I know that anyone interested in this conversation, in what you said, will be very interested in your work because your work pushes all this into practical routines and approaches for readings. You know, I, I love an old ebook from you that talks about intuition. And, mm. and different exercise for intuition, right? Oh, yes, yes. What, yeah. What's the name of that? That, I don't that was, uh, was it Affinity? Aff no, Affinity? I know, I no, I think that is an older oh. one, that you, you give some intuitive oh, exercise. Oh, uh, yes. There's, Something uh, with a point, right? A, oh, a dot. Dude, I've, I've written so much. <laughs> I've written so much crap, I forget. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I, I can't remember its name now, but I think I, think, yeah. I can't remember what the title is now. Yeah. Uh, but, but I know the one you mean, yeah, where there's yeah. sort of actual... Um, different exercises about exercises you can do. intuition yeah 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 because to, to hide your I, intuition yeah yeah i think that is very important for our community because as uh, i said we have a very direct scientific approach of okay how can i do it and hmm. if we said just do it it doesn't work for people hmm. that no i will not do it and they continue the path so some exercises in a rational manner can allow people to get, have a better grasp Mm. But also, we all always need to say that you just need to do it because mm. in that 
action you are becoming, right? Some people have very stressful situations in the community because they perform like once a year or they mm -hmm. never perform because they are too nervous. And you know, everyone is needed in the community and some people are not performers and that's okay. Some people are collectors, some people are very knowledgeable persons, right? And that's okay. If you don't perform, that's okay. But if you have that call, that desire, do it and push yourself because in your home or just reading or just buying the latest trick will not do the work. If you, you are a performer, you are a performer if you perform, as simple as that, right? And you, you are doing mentalism for people, you can feel yourself as a mentalist. And if you are not doing, that's fine. We are not better than anyone, right? Oh, no, everyone, no. Is, everyone is invited to the conversation. Both yeah. the bizarre, the mentalist, the magicians. As you said, the labels are not relevant because my label is not the guarantee for a powerful performance. I need to be connected in that moment, offering my best, you know. And sometimes I do, I do just reading. Sometimes I, I do psychic entertainment and whatever. And sometimes I can do a magic with whatever because that's the situation, right? So yeah, yeah. I think that in order to have a better wellness in this community, we need to know what is my role? What, what can I mm -hmm. offer? What, what can I do? Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, you, you know yourself, know yeah. what your strengths are, know what your weaknesses, weaknesses are, and, you know, uh, and, and don't see any failings as you know being weaknesses we are all different we all have different skill sets yeah. we all have different our, our personalities have different um um strengths so you know and, and that, that's the thing is that don't em don't try to emulate other performers be yourself be your own performer you know we've seen far too many darren brown clones you know yeah. uh, over the past few years to know that, that the most powerful performers are those that are themselves are individuals yeah, you know yeah. you as an individual are not replaceable you're not nobody can do a better job of being you than yeah. you so yeah. so know know your own skills yeah, yeah. And, and, and 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 don't try to don't try to change them you know yeah. don't think oh I, I wish i was more like you know I, I wish i was more like dynamo and so i'll i'll dress like dynamo and do what he does or yeah. you know or or or, you know, I wish I was more like Paul Voudini and then stand on stage and talk crap for an hour. Just, uh, <laughs> just, just, to, but just know what your strength is. You know, my yeah. strength is talking crap. Other people have far more useful strengths than yeah. me. So just know, know yourself and, and embrace that, you know. Yeah. And, 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 you know, maybe it sounds contradictory, but it is not. But whenever someone asks me, how can I start with mentalism? One of my tips is imitate someone, but have very conscious awareness that imitation has a final point. And you said, you know, to say, okay, I will imitate Darren Brown, but just for six months because imitation can be a tool for self knowing, right? Mm. So yeah. I can do whatever Darren Brown is doing. I do it for my family, for my friends, and say, okay, that that's, doesn't work very well. I will take Paul Bodini or maybe it took a note. And you can start to understand yourself through the imitation of others, but remind yourself this has to stop at the end of the year or at some time because yeah. if not it's a constant action that it will never end and as you said we, i i met several people that they are clones of their brown or they are clones of banachek or they mm. because they didn't understand that that imitation is valid but just for a little brief time yeah yeah, you can do that to be just to give yourself confidence, you yeah. know, as a, as a mask to hide yeah. behind. Yeah. But I think uh, eventually you've got, you're going to have to take the mask off because, you know, yeah. we've already got a Darren Brown. We've already got a Banachek, but yeah. we haven't got a you. So, yeah. you know, so, so be you. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and then you play to your own mask. <laughs> yes, that's you, right. Put your own mask. Yeah, put your own mask. It's, on. Like, it's like the Jerry, the Jeff McBride act, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And another, yeah. another, another. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, you, yeah, we need to create our own mask and, and yeah. in, the, the concept of vulnerability for me is very beautiful and powerful because in a way your mask allows you to be vulnerable to others and to tell your own stories and yeah. to, to share with your audiences those emotional moments in your past maybe or maybe your observations about the world and as an artist if we understand Mr. Performance as an art we need to express ourselves we need to be vulnerable 
because yeah. I, I saw your work, for example, a huge influence in the Victorian era. Yeah. Yeah. And why do you feel that this is so attractive to you? Do you know, I have no idea. Well, I, I think it's probably as a, as a, as a child, um, as I've already said, I was a complete believer in anything paranormal, supernatural. Yeah. And I used to love watching, you know, sci-fi TV shows and, yeah. uh, and horror films, etc. And uh, I used to read a lot of um, Marvel and DC comics, and I was a real daydreamer. You know, all, all, of, all of the teachers used to say to my parents, you know, Paul's always daydreaming. He's never, you know, he never focuses, he never yeah. concentrates. Because in my mind, I was always you, off. You were focusing on another thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, yeah, I, that's I, I, I was off all, uh, yeah. And then I discovered the Victorian books such as Frankenstein, Dracula, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, The Invisible Man, all of those sort of classic Victorian Gothic horrors. And, and I also started to learn about Jack the Ripper, the crimes of Jack the Ripper, yeah. and had this idea in my head of the, the fogs in London, you know, and the sort of the policeman with the, with the light going down the and created this very romantic notion in my head about what the Victor Victorian era was. And I also, I think as a child, it was, I almost felt as though the Victorian era was a time when ma the magic was real. There really was magic, you know, after reading all of these books, Frankenstein, Dracula, etc. Um, I sort of, in my mind as a sort of eight year old, 10 year old kid, began to feel that, you know, there, that, that this really was an era when, when magic was real. Yeah. And, and now the magic had gone from the world, but in, in the Victorian time, it was, and of course, I, I remember having a book um, about the Victorian era, and one of the chapters was about spiritualism, and they had the photos, you know, the spirit photographs, and the, and the drawings of the seances, and I remember looking at those photographs, and even though, and, and still, even now, when you look at those photos, with the, uh, the ectoplasm coming out of the mouth, and it's quite clearly fake you know photographs and it's quite clearly just cheesecloth or you know linen that people you know uh, but even so when you look at that photos there's still a weirdness about them even though you know it's fake they're still they've captured some sort of and it's i think you know it's the it was a technology of the time the way that the the photos were taken yeah. somehow it captured yeah. almost captured something almost of the soul and you can look at those pictures and although you know it's staged or yeah. fake you can't help but make you go, oh, wow, that's weird. That still yeah, yeah. looks weird. Yeah. And so all of that is really, during my formative years, really um, influenced me. And, and it's a love that I've never, I've never left. You know, I used to be into superheroes, but I would always love it when they would reimagine the superheroes, you know, yeah. Victorian Batman or something like that. I used to, that, that used to be my favorite thing, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I, I think it was discovering all of those different influences, the novels, the Jack the Ripper, the, 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 the spiritualism, um, in a, at a very formative time of my life, sort of around eight, 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, and it's something that's just stayed with me. And, uh, you know, even to this day, my favorite TV shows are things like, you know, Penny Dreadful and, uh, and the numerous others, similar ones. They still, you know, I still choose to watch those over, over every, everything else, you know. Yeah. Uh, if something's set in the modern time, I go, oh, it's all right, but it's sort of, it's a bit modern. But then something comes out that's set in the Victorian time, and I'm like, oh yes, that that's me. That, you know, that that'll do me. <laughs> yeah, and, and what you said yeah. about the the images of the spiritual spiritualism era uh, sounds to me like everyone in the mystery arts, even if we include these spiritualists in the mystery performances, mm. they are creating metaphors, and the metaphor mm. doesn't invalidate the higher truth, right? Because obviously we know that in mentalism we dramatize the telepathic mm. experience because I am using a billet, I am using a big book test and that's our technology to create mm. a metaphor that connects people with that higher mm. event that is real, right? So yeah. maybe yeah. That, that spirit with the line and clothes and whatever is obviously fake. They know that using the technology of the time, they are creating that because they are talking about some, something higher. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, it's the, yeah, yeah. And there's various uh, explanations uh, that are that one of them is that the photographs were just recreations of what they experienced in the sales yeah. room. But of course, you can't make those experiences um, occur on demand. Yeah. So they were just recreating them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the other, the other one I really like, uh, and I talk about in my lecture about spiritualism a lot, is that the mediums 
would say that yes, they they use trickery, they use fraudulent techniques, but they need to do that in order to open up the door for the real yeah. phenomena to, yeah. to occur. Because that you need to get the beautiful. yeah, it is. I think I think it's I think it's amazing, yeah. and it's saying you know we need to get the energy up, we need to get people's. Uh, we need to bypass people's cynical um, sort of uh, outlook on life. We need yeah. to show them something that's amazing so that then they can then open themselves up so that the real spirits can then come in. Um, and, yeah. you know, yeah, I, I like that. I like to believe that's true. I know yeah. other people will say it's just an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> and, of and of course, and I, I can see that as well. I'll say, yes, I can yeah. see how it's an excuse. But I love that thinking yeah. and that notion that they, yes, Yes, we're frauds. Yes, we're fakes. Yeah. But what we're trying to do is open up the doorway for the real uh, phenomena to yeah. occur. And in many ways, that's that's similar to what we've been talking about today. You know, yeah, about, yeah. And, uh, and uh, as performers, that link between the trickster and the magician is very interesting in the tarot as well. Because if we see the original tarot, not the Rider Waite, the original, mm. the magician yeah. was the battleur, right? Yeah. That's basically a trickster, a sleight of hand mm. artist. Yes. Then with the reader weight tradition, we move to the magician, esoteric magician. But yes. we need to understand also that in our inner reality, we have those techniques and all the technologies that we use in performances. But also we are both, right? We, we need to mm -hmm. master both worlds. Yeah. And, and yeah. that excuse, I love that excuse that, that, that you said that yeah. some people will, will create the drama and they know that this is just dramatized because that opens the mind to and, and for my personal work that is very true right I, I i normally use simple techniques minimalist approach but i focus a lot in the outer reality because i know that i am doing the billet peak i know the one ahead or whatever but that for me is not the focus in performance the focus in performance is in the creation co-creation of this experience and the metaphor is there and my intention as performer in telepathy, for example, is that people really can connect mentally after the performance. It's not about just that. It's about how can yeah. you continue your life and your daily routine understanding that you can connect with others, right? Or mm -hmm. with predictions. How can you really observe what is happening? How can you remember the future in a way? Mm -hmm. Or with psychokinesis. It's, this is not about the spoon. It's about the energy. Hmm. Maybe you need to hug your loved ones more often because that's energy. You need yeah. to think about others. You need to meditate and pray and focus because that's energy, right? So we are doing metaphors that don't yeah. conclude on stage. They just start, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's a, and it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Paul, you know that we can continue hours and hours and maybe we will yeah. you know but uh, we will finish the <laughs> on a higher plane <laughs> yeah of course let's go <laughs> so thank you very much paul for your time that was my pleasure and great. everyone who is watching this go to uh, paul budini's site you, you have your ebooks in there right uh my ebooks at the moment are well obviously they're available at Ment mentally center of course uh and other places uh penguin library the usual places uh, just just google me and you'll you'll find um i don't i don't sell them on my own site at the moment okay. but uh, but there are but there are plenty of places um yeah. that, 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 that they're including pablo's wonderful site where yeah. they are all available yeah 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 so again thank you very much paul have a beautiful Pleasure. day and yeah, you too anything that you need yes let's keep in touch yeah fantastic thanks bye bye